uh, in, in, in the Agent Orange. And so um, they uh, were trying to sue the federal government and to get some uh, money for their, uh, for their, their conditions. In any event, um, I want to look at the cancer data, and that's what I really wanted to, uh, to dwell on. So uh, these are more, this is from 1976 to 1991. Rather than, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of papers out there. If you actually try to research this subject, uh, you'll find that there are people that will tell you that dioxins don't do anything in the environment. Other people that will tell you that, will, that are running around going, the sky is falling. It's like Chicken Little. The sky is falling. We're all going to die from the dioxins. Uh, the truth is probably somewhere in between, like it usually is when you've got the lunatic fringes on both sides of an argument. But you, again, you have to look at the scientific evidence. So the evidence that I see based on this study, uh, and I'm just going to look at the, you know, you can look at individual, they've broken this down uh, into uh, many, many categories. And if I show you what I'm looking at, you'll see I'm not going to read uh, all of this. But this is, uh, this, this is a study. I'm just going to go through. And what I want to do is really concentrate on zone, uh, zone A, because this is the highest exposure area. So in zone A, uh, they've looked at the number of people that are involved in this, and they expect uh, over the 15-year period uh, for there to be 38.3 uh, deaths uh, from all causes. There were, 30, uh, there were 39. So st statistically, there's no significant difference. But I want to look at cancers. Um, the total number of cancers that were expected for that population was 13.5 cancers, and they found six cancers. Um, you know, this is, a, this is a terribly carcinogenic material, so why do we get less cancers uh, from this particular uh, population that, you know, now in some instances, we may find one or two instances, uh, well, actually I don't, not in this particular case. It seems that for all the types of cancers, they expected two stomach cancers, they got none. They expected one colon cancer, they got none. They expected a half of a pancreatic cancer, you know, because of the small numbers that were involved. There was one case. Uh, lung, uh, they expected four, 4.2, they got four. The other ones are essentially, uh, they expected a, a half of a, of a bladder cancer and they got one bladder cancer. These, none of these things are statistically significant. There's no evidence here based on this data that at least in this particular population that these materials cause these kinds of problems. So that, um, that makes, makes the, I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you that these compounds are not dangerous or we should not concern ourselves with the fact that some of this stuff winds up getting into the waterways where it does bioaccumulate. And we're talking about pretty low levels here. Now, I used to have arguments uh, almost on a, uh, uh, perhaps a monthly base, uh, basis with the environmental prote the United States Environmental Protection Agency, because I knew a lot of the people that worked there, and we had to deal with these people, and we had to get rulings from them about what we could and couldn't do in terms of treating uh, these kinds of materials. But the EPA um, did a almost 180 degree uh, turn on uh, things like uh, uh, tetrachloro, uh, uh, no, the, the, the tetrachlorodibenzodioxins uh, and some of these other materials because they initially were saying that these were the most toxic uh, materials known and then they, they started to back off sometime in the 90s and started to say, well, you know, we have to reevaluate this because, you know, we're not really seeing a bunch of human cancers or human deaths. As a matter of fact, there's been no death directly attributable uh, to uh, these compounds uh, so far from any kind of exposure. And as I said, the deaths that were attributable to that were, were basically uh, enormous quantities of this that were being eaten by people who didn't even know that they were being sold a, uh, this, wasn't, this was just a, a, a criminal activity that some, some individual in, uh, in, in Japan just decided that he wanted to make some money and didn't care how many people he killed in the process. So he was selling this contaminated oil. That's really not what we're talking about. And these things, all of these materials are toxic. If you were to take enough of them in, into your body, I'm sure you would, in fact, uh, get, if you didn't get cancer, you would die outright from, uh, from ingesting these materials. So what we're really talking about is at the levels that they would actually be found in uh, um, 
in the environment are they really dangerous. And I don't think anyone is, has demonstrated that they are, that this is something that we have to really worry about. Uh, particularly, I think it's something that we should be vigilant about. Uh, we should, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that we shouldn't concern ourselves at all about these kinds of things, but what I am saying, in fact, is that we, uh, uh, I don't think we should take that uh, chicken little attitude that I mentioned before when we're dealing with these materials. There are other things in the water that are a lot more toxic than that. One of the things that's mentioned in your book um, are um, heavy metals that are in the water, and I wanted to talk about one in particular because it's a, it's a little, uh, it's a little uh, confusing because of the name that's given to this. But you'll see that uh, when mercury enters the water, or it's in biological systems, uh, mercury will wind up getting methylated. And they talk about methyl mercury. I think it's mentioned in your book. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, cadmium and copper, lead, and mercury. So if you look on 416, uh, your book tells you that pure liquid mercury, uh, like the stuff that's in thermometers, probably not anymore, is harmless unless its vapors are inhaled. That's kind of an interesting phenomenon. Uh, the mercury metal itself does not appear to be uh, to have any great toxicity. And most of us have mercury. Uh, those of us that don't have perfect teeth, and we have uh, amalgam, dental amalgam, put into our teeth. It's actually uh, a uh, an alloy of silver and mercury, and you know that seems to be stable in the body for long periods of time. Uh, I'm not aware of anybody ever getting sick uh, from amalgam, even the small amounts of amalgam that when the dentist tells you to spit, and you uh, don't get it all out. Some of it, a little bit of it, winds up getting swallowed. It just passes right through your system. If you spill mercury on the on the floor, I used to play with it when I was a kid. I used to I used to get mercury from my dentist, uh, and he would give me small amounts of it, and I'd transfer it from one hand, pour it to the other hand, the other hand, and eventually uh, I'd wind up spilling some of it on the uh, carpet in my bedroom. And so I probably uh, had enormous quantities of mercury vapor. Uh, I guess maybe I slept with a window open, so it wasn't so bad. Probably lost a few IQ points as a result of this, but I don't think it really, overall, I don't think it really uh, was a great detriment to me. But mercury vapor is toxic if it's in a high enough concentration. Uh, it's a little bit different than when we're dealing with actually, uh, actually dealing with water soluble compounds of mercury. So things like uh, mercuric chloride, um, this compound, HG is a symbol for mercury. So a compound like that really is quite toxic. There's no question about it. I don't know what human toxicity would be, but you know these kinds of materials were used uh, for a long period of time uh, in the uh, industry that, uh, that manufactures hats. And they used to have a felt band, maybe they still do that, have a felt band that went around, that went around men's hats anyway. And that band uh, that was put on, uh, on the hat was somehow treated uh, with, I don't know whether it was mercuric chloride or mercuric nitrate, uh, but the people that worked in that industry who used to do that process uh, developed a neurological condition that was referred to as the Hatter shakes. And it caused a uh, just kind of a, 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 a shaking, uh, these people would walk around and they would be shaking all the time. And uh, this is actually the model for uh, 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 Carol's Alice in Wonderland when he talks about the Mad Hatter because uh, one of the uh, uh, other things that occurs from this uh, uh, acute or chronic mercurialism that is ingesting a lot of this material is that it, it leads to a form of insanity. So we had the Mad Hatter. So mercury is dangerous uh, It's you know, and things like lead are dangerous. All these kinds of things are in fact dangerous. When this gets into the uh, aquatic environment, it's in there. Uh, it's not in there as methyl mercury. When they say methyl mercury, it's really a misnomer because this is actually a, uh, a cation. It's a positively charged ion, and then there has to be some negatively charged ion in there. And in seawater, it's most likely chlorine. So the compound, when they talk about methyl mercury, what it really is is uh, methyl. Uh, uh, merc uh, it's, me it's methyl mercurous chloride. Methyl mercury one uh, chloride is what's actually. Uh, going to be in the water. And that material is quite toxic. And again, it's something that does bioaccumulate. And if you eat 
uh, enough of it. It's going to be very, very harmful. So there are these, uh, uh, there are these uh, uh, materials that, that do get in the environment, and they can be uh, quite dangerous. And I'm a lot more worried about things like uh, uh, methylmercury, I think, than I would be uh, things like uh, uh, PCBs or uh, 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 PCDFs or PCDDs, uh, because that is a material that um, uh, there's a lot of mercury that's being dumped into the atmosphere through a number of different processes. Uh, eventually, some of it does find its way into the water, and uh, there have been cases of, uh, of mercury poisoning uh, from eating uh, a lot of fish. So there are recommendations in some cases that we should cut down our fish consumption uh, to once a week. Uh, there are other people that say, no, it's perfectly safe to eat fish uh, twice a week. You might want to eat fish that are less fatty. I think things like salmon uh, tend to be a fattier fish or some other fish that uh, don't have as much uh, uh, body fat, so there's likely to be uh, less mer uh, mercury in their tissues and probably less of some of these other uh, heavy metals. But anyway, I just wanted to uh, apprise you of these, uh, you know, they're, they're arguments. They're things that uh, scientists will argue, argue very uh, vehemently over. Nobody really knows uh, entirely um, what the effect of any of these things uh, are ultimately on human beings, um, but we, but we, uh, when we, when we say that things like uh, PCDDs are the most toxic uh, materials, uh, clearly, the the data so far doesn't really bear that out. Yes, they are toxic. Uh, there are things that are obviously a lot more dangerous than that. And I, you know, I, again, if we have to worry about uh, what we're putting in the sea. I would be a lot more concerned about all the, uh, the, the creatures that we're killing with just by uh, dumping uh, huge, huge quantities of, of plastic into the sea, uh, where we're actually choking these things to death. So again, uh, as I say, it's a political issue uh, to, a, to a large extent, and uh, uh, I don't like to look at uh, green, what Greenpeace says, because uh, these people are also environmental fanatics, in my opinion, and um, you know, they'll, they'll tell you that everything that's out there. Everything, every one of man's activities is doing something to destroy the planet. And, you know, in some cases they're probably right, but they tend to over-exaggerate. And people that will tell you unequivocally uh, that these things are doing nothing to the planet, they're probably not right either. So we, do, we, just, we just have to be uh, diligent in watching uh, the levels of these materials, making sure that we're not putting more of these things into the water. And we have to be careful about things, obviously, like oil spills which have a, an immediate and detrimental effect that you can see. It's not, it's not a question, does, is this harming the environment? Obviously, that is harming the environment. Anyway, uh, it's been a, a real pleasure uh, talking to you over these last 13 weeks. And again, I wish everybody Hatzlachah, and I hope that I'll have an opportunity uh, to meet and talk to a number of you uh, personally in the uh, in, uh, I guess it's in, it'll probably be early in March. You'll get a couple of uh, lectures from, uh, from Rabbi Weiner, and this test will be, again, as, this, the, as always, 25 and 8. So again, uh, thank you for your uh, attention.